God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor for such a wonderful season you have prepared for us to be revived again. For such a season for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon our lives. For such a season to revive our life again, to increase our faith, to deepen us, O oh Lord, into our conviction for heaven. Lord, we thank you. We are joyful. We are happy for these great and mighty things you are doing in our life. Blessedful Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for this program. We thank you for everyone you have positioned to be a blessing to us in this program. Lord, may all glory be returned back to you in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we are committing this session into your hands, Lord. Father, I pray that you speak to us again. Minister the word to us again. Revive us again. Increase our fire again. Release that blessing, oh, Lord, you are prepared for, for us in this very season through this session, oh, Lord, upon our life again. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you have taken charge. Thank you for the utterances you have prepared. Thank you for everyone, O oh Lord, you have key into this program, O oh Lord. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want Amen. To, Amen. I want to appreciate our daddy, Pastor Honest, my mommy, Omihida. This family has been a wonderful inspiration to me, a very great encouragement to me. In fact, if I should share the testimony of what happened recently, you will bless God for their life. God bless you, Daddy. I love you so much. Mommy, God bless you. And may God bless this family continually. And may we all rejoice like this again in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, without wasting time, you see, God so much loves us. <laughs> Look at the package. Wow. And if you listen to the daddy that spoke now, if, you're, if, you, if you were all ears, you can, you, can, you can grab everything I know by now. You're already revived. What? Look at the message. Look at the one that mommy first gave us. It was all awesome. What a great thing that the Lord is doing in our midst. And we are coming back again now. To still look into it from another dimension, that there shall be a performance of those things spoken by the Lord, spoken of by the Lord. I won't go back to read all this uh, scripture that Daddy have read. I will just, you know, go into a different direction so that the package will be full for us. Hallelujah! I am blessed. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for this spiritual awakening to deepen our faith. We thank God for this revival to reignite our fire, the fire of the first law. We thank God for this very hour that God has prepared to change our lives and encourage our advancement towards righteousness. Thank God for the healing he has prepared through this because I know a lot will receive their healing. A lot will be delivered. If only you can anchor your belief on the faith that daddy just mentioned. Your faith has a lot of role to play here. I just appreciate God for all what God is already doing in our midst in Jesus' name. Be unto me according to your word, according to your promises. I can stand secure. Be unto me according to your word, according to your word, O oh Lord. Be unto me. When I was reading the scripture, I could, I, 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 I could see the response of Mary to the angel. He said, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Behold the handmaid of the 
Lord. Behold, you servant of God, you child of God, be it unto you, unto me, according to thy word. Poor. This is mighty. And the thing said, there shall be performance of those things which we had told her from the Lord. If you read the beginning of that 45, he said, and blessed is she that believe, for there shall be performance. But there is a condition. Blessed, you are blessed if you believe. We are promised in scripture that she is blessed because she believe. <laughs> this is wonderful. That is to say you are blessed if you believe. The condition is very, very simple. You are blessed if you believe. Blessed are you who have believed that the Lord will fulfill his promise in your life. Blessed are you who believe that the Lord will do what he has told you. Blessed are you who believe everything that the Lord has spoken to you, all the direction you have been given. Blessed are you. The first, believe. As the word comes to you, believe. 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 Everything we are talking about is believe. But well, brethren, do you know one thing? Believing God's promise sometimes is, is, is not easy. But there is a way to make it very simple and easy. Believing God is daring. If we dare to believe, we will be blessed among men. If you dare to believe, definitely you will stand out. You're believing in the word, in the truth, in the promises. Believing in holiness, believing in righteousness, as some people are still arguing, asking questions, definitely the Lord will fulfill his own. That is said, there is no promise in the scripture with that condition. The condition for you to be blessed is to believe. Now, I see believing as accepting as a fact and making a commitment of your own future to the promise of God for, to save you. The promise of God to save you, accepting that very fact and making the commitment of the promises of God upon your life is too unfortunate that so many of us believe what we never examine. We believe what we don't know. And before we know it, we are deceived according to our former ways of life in our former churches. But thank God. For the Lord has brought us to a place where if you believe in this very truth, you shall be blessed. Not just being blessed, we shall make it to heaven. I pray that we shall make it to heaven in Jesus' name. The Bible said in Hebrews 13 verse 39, it said we are not of them who draw back unto petition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. To the pure, all things are pure. Scripture says so. But to those who are corrupted and not believing. So you are not believing because it's not true. You are not believing because you are corrupted. You are not believing because holiness doesn't exist. You are not believing because there is no heaven. You are not believing because you have not yet repented deeply. You have not made up your mind to follow Christ. You are not believing because that the Rika is not real. Mommy Linda, is, the revelations are not true. You are not believing because God never blessed us with genuine leaders, mommy, honest, mommy, mommy Hida and daddy honest. No, you are not believing because you are not born again. To the pure, all things are pure. But to them that are corrupted and not believing, it, the Bible says nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and their conscience is all corrupted. So friends, I thank God for this opportunity you have in this revival meeting. For you to believe God, for you to come back to your senses again, say, God, Lord, I need, I, I, in fact, I need to come back to you. I want to reconcile my ways back to you now. I've decided it's a time. What a great opportunity to come back to him and make up your mind. Nothing binds us to God as like a strong belief in his word, strong belief to his unchanging love, strong belief to his promises. No, you can't see anything that will be binding you to God like he... Believing, taking, accepting the totality of his word, how it comes. Some of us find it very challenging because of the faultiness in our salvation. 
we are not genuinely saved. That is why even when your leader is talking to you, you, argue, you begin to argue. Your mind will argue throughout the whole night. It's not because the leader has not spoken the truth. It's not because the, it, it's not taking us in the right way. Because you are arguing because you are not genuinely saved. Praise the Lord. Now, for them that have made their foundations right, that your salvation is genuine, and you are anchoring on God's promises, I pray that your belief shall be strengthened tonight in Jesus' name. This is a very wonderful revival meeting that the Lord has released upon us, Lord, to take us to the next level of holiness and righteousness. And when I was going through this, I was just rejoicing, appreciating God for the Lord locating me through this meeting again. Are you, holding on the, are you holding on to the promises that God has given to you? Are you looking at the promises tonight as the messages are going on? You are praying, oh Lord, strengthen my conviction. Help me, Lord, to hold on to these promises you have given to me. The Bible is full of so many treasures, full of promises. But the condition is, if you don't believe, if you don't agree with it, well, I pray the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Brethren, I won't go into all those uh, Daddy have explained it all. It's just like my message has been preached, but I will, the Lord will help me again to take it from another different dimension. We are looking into some simple promises of the scripture that will help us to know that the promises are yes and amen according to the word we have heard from Daddy, uh, uh, Daddy Dapo. The promises. We are going to look at the promises. And look at how this very thing now relates to our revival meeting. The Bible says in Mark 9.23, I want to read that very sweet verse. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. And he's telling us, verse 23 is saying, Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. To them that believe it. If only you can believe all things, everything, mention it. You are studying the Bible, you will be just getting the understanding. No more questioning. Oh, I get confused. Mm -mm. First, believe what the word is saying. Evangelism, you will have strength to do evangelism. Prayer meeting, you will the zeal for prayer meeting will be there. Checking on people, following up, everything according to the direction of our leader will be so easy. Because what? You have believed. All things have become possible for you. Are you not praying for healing? Are you praying for people for deliverance? Are you praying for people for blessing? Everything will be possible for you because you believe. This verse is telling me again that if I find a promise in the Bible that applies to my situation, I can stand out on that promise and believe it. We need to train our thoughts to line up with God's word, to line up with God's promises for our life. When that happens, our faith will grow and we can expect the impossible to happen. We can expect so many things. That is why the Bible says, if you can believe all things, all things, all things, all things are possible to them that believe it. Now, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. There is also another wonderful promise there. Before we pray, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Chapter 1, verse 20, the Bible says, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 20 is telling me. And he says, Wait a minute. Second Corinthians. Oh, Second Corinthians. Yes, I'm in Second Corinthians now. Chapter 1, verse 20. Then I read. If <clears throat> for all the promises of God in him are yea, yes. And in him and amen unto the glory of God. I want us to ponder on this. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And through him, and they are yes and amen. <laughs> hey, if this 
It's not encouraging to you. It's so wonderful and so much encouraging to me. All of God's promises are yes and amen. God will do what he says and he, do, uh, uh, he will do what he says. He will do. But we have to do our part. We have to play our part. That's why Daddy told us that. To every promises, scriptural promises, biblical promises, revelational promises, there is a condition attached to it. To as cheap as if you are willing, if you want to be saved, accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, and you shall be saved. So simple. For you to be saved, there is a condition. You must accept the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. It means that all of God's promises are sure and very firm. No wavering. They are unchanging. And our part is to walk close with him and be obedient in doing what he tells us to do, in following his directions. In, in obeying the leadings. Now, how? Our leaders, they are directing us right. They are leading us perfectly. I cannot see any, I have never, and I will never argue with them because I know they are wired directly from heaven. If you see the way they were brought even to um, uh, America, you will, see, you will see this could be nothing but God. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, all the promises all God has spoken, and all he's still saying, I don't have choice, but yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word, according to your promises. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want us to look at one or two promises again before. <laughs> Let's see the book of Psalm 91, verse 9 and 11. Psalm 91, verse 9 and 11. Hallelujah. Psalm 91, I want to quickly read verse 9, at 9 to 11. And he says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy tabernacle, can you get it? Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and even the Lord your tabernacle, there shall be no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Who on earth we deny these promises, or we not agree with these promises, or we not believe in these promises? You don't believe, not because it is not true, you don't believe because your mind is corrupted. Because, blankly, you are not born again. I am sorry if that is too hard for you. <laughs> because you are, you are pretending, you are hypocritic, that is why you don't believe this. And it may not be applicable to you because, anyway, I pray God that your, your time has come for you to come out of unbelief. Did you catch that very verse of the scripture? He said, no calamity, no plague will come near your home because you have made the Lord your God, your refuge, your dwelling place. Look at that very verse 11. For he will give his angels charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways. In all your ways. Not, it is not only, it is not, it's, it's not only God watching over you, but he commands his angel to guide his angels to guide you. This is a wonderful promise that is anywhere that the, that the Rika is going to uh, uh, Kaduna, he takes no, 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 no security guard. I have gone with him to Kaduna twice. No security guide. We entered train and we left. When you see other ministers coming, because the promises are there working. How? If you can make the Lord your God, your refuge, even your most high, your dwelling place, that promise will, 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 will manifest in your life. Will be manifesting in wherever you are, in your household. Because his promises are yes and amen. I will, I will take us directly to how this is now uh, 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 useful in this revival meeting. But let's take on another, another, another promise. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. 
Beloved, I pray that we do not abuse the grace that is covering us in this movement. Because as it, as it is applicable to our leaders, so it's applicable to all of us that are genuinely members of Holiness of our Movement. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to you that believe it. Everything you think of is possible for you. Joshua 1, chapter 8. Uh, chapter, yes, I will start reading from verse 9. Joshua chapter 1. Just one second. Praise the Lord. I want to read verse 9. The verse 9 said, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and be of good courage. Not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. Okay, that is for verse, uh, verse 9. But from verse 7, from verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do all things, to do all things, all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from... Turn not from it to the right, to the right hand, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. Do you see the promise? Now, this book of law shall not depart from the mouth, verse 8, and thou, but thou shalt meditate therein, day and night, that thou mayest of thou to do according to all that is written therein, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then have a good success. Brethren, these are promises that are yes and amen. Are promises that are unwaving. Are promises that are stable. Are real. I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to anchor our beliefs and take these promises the way it is in Jesus' name. If you look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, you read, read the whole of the chapter, you will see a lot of promises. From verse 11, I know the plan and the thought that I have for you, says the Lord. Plan for peace and to uh, uh, plan for peace and for well-being, and to give you a future and a hope. What a great promise! What a great promise! Oh, this was exactly how the Lord came to Eve and said, uh, "Blessed, I, I, I want to return back to that very that very verse." He said, there shall be performance of the, okay. This was how uh, the Lord came to Eve and released a promise unto Eve. If you read Luke chapter one, according to what that, that the have read, I don't want to go back there again. If you read through, you see the promises on Eve. Do you know that, uh, on, um, on, on Mary, sorry. Do you know that Mary didn't argue? He, all you know is he had no choice than to believe it. When the angel Gabriel appeared to him, to her, he declared he, her as a vessel God has chosen. The one as a virgin to be pregnant. You can imagine what? I was thinking about it. How was Mary able to accept that promise the way it came? Because Mary was a born again child of God. Because Mary was not just a novice. Mary was not a deceiver. Mary was not a hypocrite. Mary was not somebody that uh, they are managing. No, Mary was somebody looking up to God, waiting upon God, a, a, a true child of God. When that promise came to her, she had no other choice than to believe God the way it is. If not, Mary have a choice to make and say, no, 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 no. I don't believe Pastor Polika, no. All the revelations, look at how the thing is coming, no. And they brought Momihida now Honest, to America. You, you see what they are doing? This is what they are playing or not. You don't believe, not because it's not true, not because it's not God that has signed them, not because it's not God that is speaking to them. You don't believe because you have been hypocritic among us. Today is your day. Repent. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. It could have been many choice to choose and say, oh, yes, Angel, thank you, I hear you, but I don't want. But I believe truly the promise is for all. I believe genuinely that we are blessed if you believe God and if you believe that he will fulfill his promise every each and every one of us. God has spoken to us. It is God that brought us to this movement. I have no other choice to make than to accept this word because it's good for me. 
I have no other decision to take because the world is bringing me to my right destination. I have no other place to look onto than looking onto the Lord in spirit and in truth, following Him in holiness and righteousness, because that is the right and the, 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 the wonderful and the beautiful decision for me. In this very uh, uh, sinful world we are living in now, what else? Where else? And in what else could I have done if not, or to be where I am if not through holiness and movement? Beloved, this world, this revival meeting has come to remind us of the promises of God upon our life. Now, how does this relate to this revival meeting? How do we become, yes, Lord, here am I, be it unto me according to their word? How do we accept this word that even when the holiness is speaking, you have no other, there is no other thing coming to your head, no other argument in your mind than, Lord, it is you that is speaking. Be it unto me according to this word I'm hearing. One, blessed are you who believe and is willing to be set apart for God. I repeat, blessed are you, sister, blessed are you, my brother, that believe and you are ready to be consecrated for God. You are ready to be made special for God's use. You are ready to be set apart, special for God. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Joshua told the people, concentrate yourself. Tomorrow, the Lord will be doing amazing things among us. That is exactly how I, saw, I am seeing it now in North America. Beloved, the Lord has come to revive us again. Consecrate yourself. Get yourself prepared. For the Lord is ready for you. Wow. I am so, so privileged and happy to be in your midst because I will be a partaker of this blessing. Hallelujah. It takes a brave defiance to stand alone with God and take him at his word. Braveness. I'm talking about braveness. Radical decision. As far as I'm concerned, I will follow you, Lord. As far as I'm concerned, this I have heard, I am going to make sure I prepare myself wholly for this revival. Wholly for this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because it will not miss me. It will not pass me by. Set yourself apart for him and you will, you will experience a great and a tremendous turn around in your life. I pray so shall it be unto you in Jesus' name. There is something you need to do. You must try as much as possible to annihilate all the debilitating spirit of trying to please people which have always been the result of, uh, the, the, which has always been the thing that have been crippling Clipping God's purpose in your life. That always been the problem why these promises in your life never manifested. Why his purpose for you we have never been achieved because you have you have been uh, looking up to the face of people. Hey, what would my mother say? What did my father say? What did my brother say? And those your brothers and sisters, those your families, they are not in Christ. You are looking at what they will say. You want to hear them. You want to follow what they will say. You want to do it in a corny way because of what they will say. You are not ready. Because you are not ready. But I want to let you know, as children of God, we are not meant to live like the rest of the world. Settle it in your heart now and receive it with joy. And be willing. To set yourself apart for God's use. Be willing to set yourself up, apart. I will be one of the people that we know for prayer as a prayer warrior. I'm going to win 100 souls this year. I am going to make sure that visitation will be, you have to take some radical decisions, but you must set yourself apart to be able to achieve this. You must concentrate yourself and be focused on him. People around us will not all will not be happy with our choice because they will not understand what God has told you. No matter, even when you sit some of your unbelieving friends down or people around you down, uh, the Lord is making me uh, one of the uh, wonderful evangelists in, um, in holiness of our movement. The Lord is telling, they, they will mock at you because you have brought yourself to a wrong place to share the vision of God when they don't understand. Brethren, don't do that. Consecrate yourself and be focused on him, on the person that's giving you the vision. He's the one that is calling you. 
Blessed are you who has believed and is willing to have his plans interrupted. Blessed are you who has believed and you are ready all your plans to let it be interrupted by God's plan. I gave us that promise that he know the plan he has for us. As we read in that very wonderful scripture. Beloved, blessed are you if you are willing to let God interrupt your plans. Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. <laughs> you will not be a victim either to God's plan or to people's reaction. Never. You will only you only have to follow the divine plan of God in your life. So that everything God has spoken about you will be unfolded. And at the end, you will be the one that will be rejoicing, not God. God doesn't have anything to rejoice anymore. Heaven is, he has all he wants. Even though he wants to destroy the whole world and recreate again, God can do it. In the whole sense, we are the one that enjoy it. If only you can allow your own plan to be interrupted by God's plan. What are God's plan? Mommy have mentioned it. I won't go back there. Evangelism. Pray all what he has prepared for us. Follow it. Follow it. Follow the leading of the Lord through our leaders. And you will experience the blessing of the Lord. I, I am testifying with you already. That day you will stand and say, thank God I am able to leave all the things I want. I wanted to disturb the plan of God for my life and follow God's purpose. You will be the one to testify. And we will all just dance with you and be happy with you. So shall it be for all of us in Jesus' name. Brethren, blessed are you who has believed and doesn't lean on your own understanding. Oh, this is where another problem is. Oh, you will see people, they believe, but they are doing it according to their own way, the way they understood. Don't forget what they have told us. Faith, trust in the Lord with all your heart. There is no, there is no other way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The Bible said, in all your ways, in all your ways, submit to him. I like that scripture. Submit to him, and he will make your way straight. He will make your way prosperous. He will make your path straight, according to Proverbs chapter 3. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Blessed are you who has believed, but you are doing it according to the purpose of God. You are doing it according to the leadings of our leaders. You are doing it according to the instruction given to us from Abuja. You are just following the instructions God is giving us. Blessed are you. Blessed are you, brother. Blessed are you, sister. Blessed are you who has believed and will not compare your gift with others. No, 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 no. I, I, I am only just meant for evangelism, you know. Uh, I, I, and um, I am just the only one evangelizing. Nobody is coming. You are complaining. <laughs> Uh, this brother is supposed to follow me. Uh, I know I'm giving you, you, you complain, you compare yourself with everybody in the unit, everybody in the chapter. Ah, my God. The leaders will just look at you and, and be smiling. Eh? The Bible says, Blessed are you who will not compare your gift, your calling with other people's own. Blessed are you that will not grumble. Blessed are you that will follow instructions. Without looking back, oh, my leader have said, this is what the Lord is leading us to do. This is what the Lord is leading us to do. This is what we are to do. And I know to say that that is, yes, Lord, be it unto me. All you have to say, yes, Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me, oh, Lord, according to thy word. According to the word. Be unto me. According to your word, according to your promises, I can stand secure. Be unto me, according to your word, according to your word, O oh Lord, be unto me. Hallelujah. I pray that you will be willing to let God interrupt all your schedules in Jesus' name. I pray that you will be willing to focus on that gift, to focus on that calling, to focus on that assignment the Lord have assigned you to in Jesus' name. I pray that you will be willing to take these instructions with the whole of your heart. Believe them. Walk on them with ease. 
What makes it easy if your salvation is genuine? What makes it easy if you are not hypocritic? What makes it easy if you are focused on his face? What makes it easy if you are not looking on the errors of people? What makes it easy? And the easier you see it, the, 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 the higher the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon you tonight. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, brethren. Time will fail me to explain again and again, just like I said, that he have cleared the message so well. That is why finally, brethren, I want to tell us, according to the scripture mommy read, I refer back to 1 Corinthians chapter, 7, chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I want to read that scripture to remind us again that each and every one of us need to be purged. You have been purged, be purged again. You are not yet purged, be purged. So that the promises of God to revive us tonight, you will not miss it at all. First Corinthians chapter 5, the seven is saying, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be new, a new lamb, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sanctified for us. Christ, our Passover, is sanctified for us. Christ, our Passover, is prepared for the release of that power and the grace tonight upon us. Christ, our Passover, is ready for us tonight. All you need to do to receive it, get yourself poured. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 31, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. Are you ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Be ready to be purged. Purge yourself. Purge yourself from your old life and make yourself ready for this revival. Be willing to sacrifice your reputation to do God's will. Be willing to give out whatsoever that is hindering you from doing God's will. Be willing. Give it out. Give it out. Let go. Let go. God has assigned you, giving you a special calling. To every assignment God has given to you, God has released also a special grace to accomplish it, to fulfillment. God has released a special grace to empower you for fulfillment. God cannot assign you something he knows you are not willing to do. That was why when the assignment came, I have no other choice. I said, well, let me just go and pray. But one day I was lying, I said, what will I pray when God has spoken? Well, God, be it unto me according to your word. I didn't know what to do. I don't know how to go or how to go about it. But it was when I got there, the thing began to unravel. I said, God, I thank you because I never rejected. And Lord, never allow me to reject any of your instructions in Jesus' name. Give me grace to follow, no matter how uneasy it is. Lord, I know before you release it, there will be grace to do it. Be ready to ask God to show you the unique work that he has created you to do. The unique assignment that he has prepared you to do. Be ready to ask God, Lord, why the reason of this revival? Now, Lord, I receive it. What else do you want me to do? Be it unto me according to your word. Brethren, finally and finally, this message is just a remember for us to believe God. To believe his word. To believe in his unfailing law, to follow his instructions, regardless of the situations in our life, that nothing is impossible with God. I just want to encourage us to choose to have faith as Daddy has told us, to trust in the God of impossibility. There is nothing impossible with God. With him, all things are possible as we have read. To watch expectantly for God's plan to be unfolded in our life as they sent you, just follow. Just follow, like somebody that doesn't have anything. You are following God's instruction. Don't care. You don't care about what the word is saying, what family is saying. You are following and believing on God's instruction. Just be following. Just be following. Be watching expectantly how the plans He has for you will be unfolded, because it takes a great dose of faith and trust in God to live a fulfilled life. And we will be greatly rewarded. And when we step out in faith. In fact, and we trust in all those promises. I just thank God for your life because of this revival. And I pray that the blessed Lord that have blessed this world will make it to be fruitful in our heart in Jesus' name. 
Thank you so much for listening to these just few words. As we rise up, up in prayer, let's begin to give thanks unto God. Let's begin to appreciate God for this wonderful time he has given unto us. Let's begin to appreciate God. Begin to give him all the thanks, all the glory, all the honor. Shall we just pray some few minutes prayer? Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for reminding us of your word. Thank you for you to recognize you and lead you specially to Christ if you are here for the first time. But before then, I want us to go to God and pray and say, Lord, we need your mercy. We need your mercy, oh Lord. Because the Bible said that your mercies are new every day. Father, release that your mercy again to strengthen me. I need your mercy again to bring me back to the right track. I need your mercy again in every area, Lord, that I've done wrong, in every area, Lord, that I've not met up with your instruction, that I've not, I've not been obedient, I've not believed Lord, have mercy upon me, Lord. Deliver me from every unbelief in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm blessed is she that believed for the performance of those things which were spoken. Lord, I am saying that we are promised through the scripture that you are blessed who believe. Blessed are you that believe. I want us to give it to God in prayer and say, Lord. Watch out every spirit of unbelief in me. My Lord and my God, strengthen me with the grace to believe. Lord, I want to believe you in everything. Because the Bible says, if you believe all things and offend the world, if you obey all things and offend the world, it said you have offended them all. And you disobey because you don't believe. If you believe, you will obey. Lord, take watch out every spirit of unbelief in me and strengthen me, empower me with the grace to believe in the name of Jesus. Pray in Jesus' from the book of second timothy second timothy i will take this and one more than i hand over second timothy chapter two that verse 21 oh my god second timothy chapter two verse 21 is saying if a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, 
sanctified and ready for this revival. If a man therefore puts himself from this, if you, sister, if you, brother, man, woman, daddy, purge yourself, you have to purge yourself from every spirit of unbelief, from every hypocrisy, every work of flesh, every carnality, whatsoever that is standing as a profession to the yes of God in your life, put it out. If you therefore purge yourself from this, he said, you shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. The prayer is simple, Lord, purge me. I am ready. Purge me. I believe you. Purge me. I want to do your will. Purge me. Every whatsoever that is frustrating your will in my life, purge it out by fire in the name of Jesus. Pray in Jesus' name. Finally, brethren, I want to put it in place and say, Lord, help me to fulfill your ordained purpose. Help me to fulfill the assignment you have sent me. Mm. Are you gifted in evangelism? Are you gifted in soul winning? Are you gifted in whichever direction as a prayer warrior? Which direction do you see yourself to be gifted that you are not meeting up with the demands of that gift? Ask God to help you. That you need grace for fulfillment. You need grace for divine fulfillment. In the name of Jesus, and at the end you make it to heaven. In the name of Jesus, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, Lord, I need your grace for fulfillment. Lord, I Hurimau is a non-denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricca, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide.